today we're looking at leak code number 250. It's a question called count univalue subtrees. And so here we're given a root of a binary tree and we want to return the number of univalue subtrees. And univalue subtree means all nodes of the subtree have the same value. All right, so here we have a tree and we can see that if there's only one node in the in the or if there's only if there's only one value if we're at a leaf level uh, then that is a univalue subtree. This is a univalue subtree. This is not a univalue subtree because we have a one here. Uh, these two are, but then the whole tree is not because the left, uh, the right subtree is a univalue subtree, but the left subtree has this one, so it's not a univalue subtree. Okay, so here we have one, two, three, four. If there's uh, no root, if it's just a null, null tree, then it's zero, and then here we have six. Okay, so the way to think about this is is that a lot of recursion that we've been doing has been top down, and this is this is something where we have to do bottom up recursion. And so, what you want to think about is what what work do we want to do when we get to the base case, when we get to the bottom of the tree. Okay, so here we have um, here we have a tree. And when we get to the leaf level here, we know that that is a univalue tree, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna create a global count that'll keep track of the univalue trees. And we'll just initialize it to zero. And now when we get to this leaf level here, okay, we know that this is a univalue tree, so we can increment count every time we're at a leaf level, and then we pass up a Boolean, okay? And so if we're at a leaf level, then we know that, that it is a univalue tree, so we can just pass up a true. We'll just return a Boolean, okay? Now, when we get to this level, when we're in a middle level, because again, we're going bottom up, we wanna calculate our result going from the bottom up. We wanna check if there is a left subtree, okay, there's no left subtree, so we just ignore it. If there is a right subtree, we want to check first is that is the value that's there true, whatever is returning true. So the, the subtree below on the right is all univalue. And is the value of our current node the same as our right node? Okay, if the value is true and our current node is the same as our right node, then we increment count. Okay, and then we return true up the tree. Okay, so now similarly, when we come down here, we're going to increment count, and then we're gonna pass up true, and same thing here, when we come to on this side, we're gonna increment count, and we're gonna pass up true, and now we have to check, there is a left subtree, and it is univalue, there is a right subtree, and it is univalue, but, the current node does not equal the left node, and the current node does not equal the right node, so we pass up false. We don't increment count, and we just pass up false. Now we get back to our root node, and the case that we have to have is both of these have to be true, and the current node value has to equal the left value and the right value, and that's not true. This one is true, but this one is false, and so we just return false. There's nowhere to return to, we break out of our main function, and then we go ahead and return our global count. Okay, so that's the idea behind it. Now let's think about time and space complexity when we're doing this, okay? We have to traverse the entire tree. We're gonna have to go through the entire tree. We're gonna be doing a depth first search traversal and we have to hit every single node. We're only hitting it once, but we do hit every single node. So our time complexity on this is gonna be O of N. Okay, now our space complexity is we're not generating any new space, but we are having a call stack. Okay, so we do have a call stack. We're gonna make recursive calls on every single level, so we have to keep track of that, and that's the space we're gonna, the implicit space that we're gonna be creating. Now, if the tree is balanced, then our space complexity will be log n, but we are not guaranteed we're going to get a balanced tree, 
So again, the issue is, is that if the tree is one-sided, we just have a very, very long right tree, then uh, this is going to be n. We're gonna have to, the call stack will be the size of the tree. Okay, so our space complexity worst case is O of n if we're dealing with a tree that is not balanced. Okay, so now let's jump into the code. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to just take care of the edge case if we uh, have a, a null input. So we just say if uh, root is null, then we just want to return zero. Now we want to create our global count. We'll set it to zero. And we want to have our depth first search helper function. That's going to take in a node. And now the first thing we want to do is we want to check, are we at a leaf level? So our base case is going to deal with if we're at a leaf level. So if uh, if the left root dot left is null and root dot right is null, then what do we want to do? We want to increment our global count and we want to return true. Okay, so if we get down here to the bottom and we're at a leaf level, then we just increment this global count and then we return true back up, up to the uh, tree. Now we want to check, uh, we want to create a, a local variable that checks if it's if the local tree is unival. So we can say let is unival equals true. And now we want to check if there's a left node. So if node.left we want to get um, our left side of our tree and see what it, if that's unival. So we can say left is going to equal or let left, and we'll just uh, have the recursive case here. So no dot left. What this is going to do is going to go down all the way down to the left side of the tree and check if they're all unival, and then it's returning up that boolean so we know if the left side is unival or not. Now we want to update our local unival. And this is just going to be if left is true, okay, and um, is unival is true, and if the node dot val, the current node, is equal to node dot left dot val, okay. So what are we doing here? We're checking if the left side of the tree is true. I'm sorry. If the left side of the tree is true here. Okay, so if this is returning true, and the current node value is the same as the left value, okay, then we want to just store that in our local is unival on the left side. Now what we want to do is the same thing for the right side. If node.right, then we want to say let right equals depth first search on node.right and then update our local is unival. This is going to be equal right and is unival and node.val equals node.right.val. Okay, so now we've checked the left and we've checked the right and now we just have to check if there if is unival if this local counter that we have if that's true, then we increment our global count. So if is unival, if it's true, then we just do a count plus plus, and then we return is unival. Okay, and then we call our depth first search on our root, and then return count. Okay, so that's the code. It's not too bad. I think it's really important to understand what's happening at the base case and then how we're recursively checking and updating this local is unival variable. Once we have that, then we can just check if that's true and we've already exhausted the left side and the right side and checked if the current value is equal to the left and right. Then we go ahead and uh, increment our global count and then we just return this is unival and that goes back up the, up the chain. So let's go ahead and run this, make sure everything works. And we're good. Okay. So that is lead code 250, count univalve trees. It's an interesting exercise in bottom up recursion.
you can't figure this problem out going top down. A lot of the other recursion questions deal with top down recursion. This is a great example of, of bottom up recursion. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see everyone on the next one.